Hi all, welcome to another Chess 24 Banter Blitz. It's around 11.30 now. I uh, just want to draw your attention first to the uh, voucher code King's Crusher if you want 15% off premium membership. So you get access to all the, the features on the site which are excellent for tournaments especially, but also if you want to play against any streamers, you just turn up 20 minutes before, send the challenge, you'll be on our challenge lists. And so you can get to play uh, a large variety of players. So think about that as well. The premium uh, voucher code here. So let's go on to um, the challenges this morning. Okay, so challenges. So I'll just be accepting only from premium member, which is that icon there, premium user. So Dr. Balu, good morning. Let's let's uh, let's accept Dr. Balu. So first on this, first come first serve for me generally. Okay. <clears throat> I'm over 2600 this morning from from last week's luck. I can only describe it as a ton of luck uh, last week. I think my preview is okay there. Okay, so let's try Sicilian defense here. D6. So knight c3, that's a bit shifty, isn't it? <laughs> Alright, so it's a it's a pretty novel approach, this instead of the normal d4 move. Now d4 in the Sicilian defense, well it's been played here. Uh I was about to comment on it, but it's been played now. So I better better think about this. E6, I'm hoping this is reasonable. Because otherwise I could have got a bind on the d4 square, potentially, if d4 isn't played. Sometimes you can get a nice bind on d4. That's that's a slight concern. But my opponent is playing this in a very interesting manner. Should I be worried? <clears throat> if I just play bishop e7 here, hoping <laughs> I can weather the storm. It seems like a direct attack almost on d7 quite early on. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna unpin now and just castle. I've got d7. Uh, I'm not too concerned about being a pawn down temporarily. I just wanna weather this storm. It has simplified the position quite significantly. Now one consideration is here, I think knight takes, if b4 there's bishop f6, the problem with white clinging on here is it could backfire. So if b4, bishop f6, that's weakening that diagonal there. Would my opponent be prepared to do that? I mean, maybe, maybe it's possible. But intuitively, I'm wondering if, for example, a5, because with the rook unprotected, a3, A takes, and the rook's unprotected on A1. So it's very easy to undermine that structure after B4 with bishop F6. This is classic stuff. All right, now here, okay. Uh, more simplification, perhaps. But should I be worried about this? It's not a totally symmetrical pawn structure. Okay, I'll try and keep some fun on the board by not exchanging the queens. Often a lot of fun is associated with the queens on. Uh, if you want a checklist of how to make games extremely dull and boring for spectators, look no further than most World Chess Championship matches. I'll protect the knight here, which he's sneakily attacking. I noticed that, yes. Yes. Uh, so g6 and rook d8 maybe. Right, g6 to evict this queen. I'm controlling e4 at the moment. Now if I played queen f5 or a5, a5 has got some perks, I think. If knight e4, maybe I take and the take on b2. I don't want my knight unperched just yet. It's controlling d7 here. That infiltration square d7. So let's see, would he dare play knight e4? One benefit, it does hit the rook. Got to be wary about the tactical pressure, but I think he can't afford to lose that pawn with knight e4. 
for some reason that's the one I'm checking <laughs> it looks like an aggressive I guess I'm I'm gravitating towards tempo gainers now that's that's good isn't it on b6 okay if I protect b6 for a moment I hope that's fine <laughs> to protect b6 like that now decision point King g7 I think King g7 looks as though my Queen's protected by the King I'm hoping my King's not a liability here okay he is pinning Okay, so we get further simplification. Or I could welcome the Queen Exchange. I'm not sure it matters if I take or if I leave it to be taken in this particular case. I definitely can't play e5 because of rook f6. Alright. If I just play rook b7 here for a moment. Now should I don't know where the simplification is going. Maybe it's going to a dead equal position. I mean, as as long as there is a major infiltration with the rooks, what's left is two rooks and a knight. I don't want the rooks coordinating on any pressure points too easily, like b6 or f7. Right, and if I played king e7 here just to hold the king in the center might be useful. You know what? I think this is a backward pawn here <clears throat> on c2, but uh, he may have that covered. If I play rook c8 here, I'm hoping that tactically is sound enough to start probing c2. Now knight a4, b3, knight c3, knight c3, ah. If I played knight a4, rook d2, knight b2, if rook b2, king d6, oh, the knight's protecting. <clears throat> if I kick the knight first with rook c5, that, that tactical idea of overloading the rooks might be valid. I'll start with knight a4. So rook d2, rook c5, knight moves, knight b2, rook b2, king d6. It's good my rook on b7. Okay, he's using that. Can I kick this out? Knight d4. And there's knight d6. If rook d7 is knight f5 and he wins the exchange, I can't play rook d7 here because of knight f5 check. On knight d6, rook c7, got to be concerned about b3 as well, but there's always knight c3 at the moment. As long as I don't play rook d7 as knight f5, I play rook c7, knight e4, rook c4. Okay, I'll try this. If I played rook e5, just to give c5, it means knight c5 later. Let's think about this. Pressure points. The king on e7 is guarding a key invasion square. If I just challenge that knight to come off. Now I have technically got a pawn majority over here. It's totally in the distance at the moment. He's got a pawn majority over there. It's totally in the distance at the moment. If I play f5 here, there might be knight b5 with a repetition. Is rook b7, knight d6. If I played knight b7, then there's no might knight b5. I'm playing knight b7. I can try a minority attack over here and a poor majority over here. Now, minority attack over here to try and fracture the majority of pawns 
even in this end game scenario, I'm going to try and fracture the pawns, or at least fix them down with one pawn fixing down two would be a good scenario, like here. Now b4 is a target. Can I play rook b5? Try and coordinate with rook g5. He's coordinating. There's e5 check if he doesn't take with the right rook. All right, time was a problem. Okay, thanks to the game. That was very tough to do anything there from that position out of the opening. Thanks. The mechanic. I played b3. It's become a little pet recently for experimenting with. I've quite enjoyed some attacks. There's also some weird gambit I've created, <laughs> which which is scoring me uh, okay. I'm uh, hoping my connection is okay. If I say hi, I didn't mean to say goo. I meant to say hi. Um, oh, is he disconnected? I don't want to take any rank points, so all the board. Okay, I'll just give him a few more set five until five seconds in. Okay, I'm gonna bought here. Okay. If you want to re challenge later. So graph. Hi there. Now, that doesn't seem a trap here, because a trap would involve queen a5 check. I, I don't think so. Uh, I don't see it. If that's a trap, I just don't see it. It looks like an important central pawn. Now, I don't even have to play f4 here. Given that my opponent might have more peace pressure, f4 might fall in for that. I can just lock down on e5 here, I think, without weakening this diagonal potentially with f4. If I'm a pawn up here, I'm a pawn up. I would hope. Okay. Now the move E4 would have the implication, I believe, of weakening the light squares. F6 may be E6 and F5, but E4, if D4, I get the C4 square. I think that's important. Okay, it blocks in my bishop, but B5, I want to stop B5. And blockade with Queen D3, just in case D3 later is important as a liberating move. Okay, here I fought earlier, this E6 and F5 would be comfortable. So if I have my dream position, it will be with, uh, let's protect that, knight c4. Probably doing something about this bishop. Okay, this bishop can go to this diagonal. Oh, I should have stopped d3. Oh. Do I play d3 or bishop f4, I wonder? I think bishop f4 at the moment. <clears throat> Maybe knight b2 on b5. There's a curious Alakine game in the King's Engine. He played knight g7, like knight b7 in the King's Engine. I remember that. It seems, I don't know, for some reason, anything Alakine plays seems authoritative. <laughs> if you look at his King's Engine games, even back then, I don't know, he's had some sort of genius. It just looks authoritative the way he plays positions. And if it's okay with him to do this thing, Keto Knight, it's okay with me. B takes, knight takes a4. I 
right, okay, I think the point is I'm still got a grip on the night squares for a moment, but it's breaking up now. So I might have done this wrong. <laughs> I think Rook B1 might be important. Just to hold B3 for a moment. Actually, knight c3 to d5 all of a sudden looks like something to do here. I don't know how that's emerged exactly, but it looks like knight c3 to d5. This would be improving my worst piece as a general principle in any case. Right, if I take with the f pawn, I keep my rooks connected. I just have to make sure Rook D2 is not happening anytime soon. I think Knight C3 and doubles the Rooks, Rook Knight D5 to, in, to cut across the Rooks. So Knight D5 on Rook D8. So that Rook D2 isn't decisive at some point. Or as effective, should we say. So Rook D8, Knight D5. In chess, I mean, there are tick boxes, but I, I'll be wary of them. I think in chess, the important thing is the scalable ideas, like looking at forcing moves more and more and more, given more time. The scalable ideas are often much more important than the tick boxes, basically. Because you can have a tick box improve your worst piece, but if you're playing against a very tactical opponent and they spend the time, especially in a longer time limit game, they'll probably find forcing moves which make your general tick boxes irrelevant. So the scalable stuff that you can do, given more time, is often more important. But here, okay, it does seem on general principles this rerouting is effective. It's giving up the exchange. I can do this, can't I? Forcing move. Queen takes, I take the... What? My browser's just blown up. <laughs> I don't know what that was. Oh god! It saved the game. It saved the game for me. My brow my browser literally blew up. I can't believe I just went back to the game without a problem that. Well, that is wonderful. I thought I, I'd, I would have lost my, I don't know what it was. Malware bites started screaming there. Are we still back in the game? Are, are we back? I, I hope we're back. Let me just check my preview. Because I was enjoying that game, <laughs> that would have been gutting if I can just 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 get to play there to the end of this game. It will be fun for me. Scan up this diagonal. Oh, the window's gone. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it seems like the window's gone. Okay, there there is an issue. Can I can I just get to the end of this game? Hold on a sec. Sorry about this. Let me try and get to the end of this game.
Okay, there's only three seconds to go. If I move quickly. Okay, let me sort out the browser. That was really unexpected. Um, okay, I seem to have the wrong browser on preview. Let me just check here if I can change that. Okay, how do I do this? Change that. I don't think this is going to work. Okay, let me just load the presentation again. All right, that's better. All right. Okay. Yeah. I think it should be on my preview soon. It's on my local preview here, the screen. It should be on my main preview soon. So the commune takes that. to be careful about this D4. Maybe D3 here? That looks a bit weak because of Knight G4. Okay, let's try to get my bearings a bit. Bishop g2 should be okay. I, I'm concerned about d4, to be honest. <laughs> d4 does look as though it's a concern. And it's been played. There's a tactic here with d3, but cd protects the bishop. So knight takes, takes, d3, cd, protects the bishop. I'm hoping. <clears throat> and if I take on c5 here, just to stop this peg, I'll just check. Okay, knight f6 might be a good idea then. Oh, knight d4 is happening. What about Queen E three? Queen maybe Queen E three, Knight E four, Bishop G seven. Alright, I'm hoping this is playable. Oh there might be Knight G four at minimum. Okay, this is all pretty dangerous. If I go back with Queen E two here. Yeah. So Knight E four, Bishop G seven, Knight G three though. Uh, this could be really nasty. Oh man, this could be really nasty. <laughs> uh, I've, uh. 
I might have been let off a bit. Can this go back? Boy, it's too late. Alright, that's intriguing. I think 94 was close to winning because of 9G3. I have to look at that after. If I play rook g1 here, or bishop takes f8, I'm f f3 is also a problem. So okay, rook maybe rook g1 then. If knight takes f1, I don't know, bishop takes f8, knight e3. Queen e2. Right, so if I try and take it here. Queen e2. At least I'm... I'm protecting F3. It's a bit of chaos, all of this. All right, if I take on E3 here. I'm hoping I'm okay at the end of this. It's a bit too tactical for me, but I'm hoping this isn't a problem, this position. Okay, I th I'm pretty sure I was dead in the water there. Let's have a quick look. I've, I think uh, my loose bishop on b2 is a gigantic problem. It's already minus two here. Okay, so bishop d7. So already taking a d4 is, is apparently good, but I'm more concerned about something around here because this diagonal just opened up. All right, knight d5 is just winning a piece. Yeah, it's hitting b2. So that that's just winning a piece. All right, hang on, queen c1, queen c1, okay. It's still bad, but okay. There was also something else though going on. I thought for some reason knight takes e4. That is better. But maybe not knight g3. No, bishop takes f8. Okay, it wasn't as crushing as I'd thought. I think the way to play it, it seems knight d5, the computer likes this. So I don't know what's wrong with queen c1 now. Knight d4. All right, it does does seem a very precarious position, so you know, well played. I I think it was well played because it opened up that diagonal against my bishop on b two. I was exposed <laughs> tactically. <clears throat> I'll go for a quieter instead of f4, just maybe a quieter e5 pressure here with knight f3 instead of f4. Now, I might regret this, I don't know. I think this is a viable alternative. You don't always have to use your f pawn. The gist here is the e5 pressure or reverse French defense transposition. So it's kind of reverse 
French defense. So A French C4. Now you might want to ask why would you want to play the French defense in reverse? It's a good question. Sometimes you want to attack the center with an extra tempo, but here I don't know. There's a bishop on b2 as well, which is a lot of like Petrosian French defense games. He has a bishop on b7 quite often. Right, there is a perk here because the knight's there, it's not so easy to play c6. If knight e7, there's c5 winning that bishop on d6, I think. This is an important tactic to bear in mind this c5 tactic. There's another one cd and bishop c4 because of that diagonal being weakened. So queen takes bishop c4, pins the queen. It does look as though the center's collapsing here. Which justifies a French defense strategy in reverse sometimes. All right, b4 seems to be winning a piece. That knight does seem to be stranded. All right, so b takes and then bishop c4. I guess queen takes here. Okay. Okay, then um, I've unpinned this knight. I would grab this center pawn, I suppose, if given the chance. Oh, is there bishop g2 to factor in? There's another possibility of playing a check here as well. All right, I think I will take that and that. So there's the centers evaporated. Okay, there is a check here or d5. I think d5 looks. Oh, uh, knight e5 could be tricky though. Bishop e2. I've got to cover against that knight. If knight e5, I think covering against the knight seems okay. I, okay, if I unpin here as well, just to unpin that knight, but knight e5, bishop e2, play bishop e2 anyway, I think. So I played rook d1 and e4, I'll stop b5. Rook d1, e4, f4. Actually, my king in the center here maybe is a concern. All right, this e4. If I play king, if I play f4 now. Stop knight e5. Maybe king f2. Oh, can I push that back? Then when you have a structure like that, if any b5 you take and you fracture the pawns in that structure, something to bear in mind. Sometimes the opponent can get a little bit of counterplay though, dynamic piece play. Let's take away the king from that diagonal. Reinforce the center. Maybe bishop f3 covers to me the light squares a bit more if I play bishop f3. It also means now e5 might be good. Exchange of queens would be welcomed. All right, if I push for e5 gradually, except bishop c5 is almost winning my queen, queen c4. Why can't I play queen c4 here anyway? And there's d6 check. d6 check is possible, but I don't want to lose my queen. Sort of exchange of queens and he takes on e7. Maybe queen b3 is better. Now if knight c5, queen takes b4. E4 is not dropping off at the moment because that bishop on f3. So d6 is the threat. Knight c5, queen takes b4. Say king h8. King h8. 
king h8 king h8 hmm I think d6 okay queen f7 but then I think I take on b4 all right thanks for the game Fenneman okay um F Fuchs Rudel <laughs> okay <laughs> it sounds a bit rude but anyway okay <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. All right. Let's 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 go. Let's go. I'm trying to be careful when I say these names. <laughs> I I saw a YouTube video last night on bloopers. It's quite funny. There's a lot of blooper videos. Quite funny. After watching the cat videos, of course. But you can get sick of cat video, funny cat videos. But if you want to, if you want a, a recommendation to carry on from cat videos. As people surf cat videos quite on YouTube quite a lot, yeah. Just look at the blooper videos, presenters. Yeah, it's quite. Uh, there was quite a few on the naughty stuff. Ah <laughs> uh, uh, dear. <clears throat> okay, so. Uh, knight C three uh, or knight G six. No, Jesus, I'm just worried about my king. You know, HG Queen H4. I don't, I don't want my king to have a hard time here. I'm wondering if H3 would be sufficient. If I take there and then take there and then H3, and I would have. I don't know what I'm gaining. Uh, let's go for it. What am I gaining? The immediate threat is Queen H4, and if H3, Knight G3, if I extinguish that uh, with Bishop E4. Knight c3, f5. What do I actually gain there? I don't, I don't know what I gain, but I've got to get rid of that knight. <clears throat> actually, to be fair, I think I, I'm aware of something. I'm aware of something. When you take on e4 like this, and they tell it like this, you're kind of weakening this diagonal. Sometimes you can tap into that diagonal, c4 to g8, if you get them to capture like this. Sometimes this is more sensitive. I've seen a few Magnus Colson games. He takes on e4 and he exploits this diagonal. I haven't got a light square bishop, clearly. Um, all right, queen h4 is ruled out for a moment. <clears throat> the check here seems to win a pawn. Technicality. Is it a worthwhile one to note? Knight g4, say, after <clears throat> h3. All right, I'll go for this technicality. C6 protects the pawn there. Queen C4 put more pressure on E4. <coughs> C6, Queen C4. Okay, can I take that pawn? And you know what? I'm going to be greedy. I'm thinking I can't see the punishment that easily. One checklist. Are you going to self pin? No. Is the queen trapped immediately? No. It, it's There's a useful point in taking that pawn and put pressure on e4, which is a center pawn. Once you take a center pawn away, it's very nice for your centralization. So, okay, I'm going to take the pawn. But as I say, forget checklist. Also, look at long forcing move sequences. As well, right here, rook b8, knight takes f6, check. I mean, check this is a not a nice to a certain extent, but it's really, yeah, forcing move calculation. Okay, so queen takes e4 here. I've nicked a pawn. I've nicked a center pawn. All right, can I do something like rook f2 here, just to shield d2? I could always, I could also one g6. Come on, not wake. Come on, I could have just taken on g6. Did 
The Queen's looking at A8 here, so the Rooks have got to keep protecting each other. Um, I think technically there's Bishop E5. If takes takes, okay. Now technically there's G7. Let's open up G7. If I Queen D4, I'm on G7. Oh, I'm wondering, uh, Rook G8. Okay, I'm on G7. I've noticed that. I can take on G6. I seem to be pretty greedy in this game, uh, but I don't know. Pawns are there to be taken, it seems. Okay, Rook H3, Rook, rook H8. The Queen's got the Bishop on side. Uh, uh, okay, I might as well just shield that again. I know I'm cautious with that. Okay, but I am. Okay. Before rook h3, I'll, I'll just shield d2 by moving it to d3. So rook h3 to h8. Okay, if I play rook h3. That rook's hanging. Okay, one concern is getting mated on g2. If I do just okay, <laughs> it's not going to happen. Thanks for the game. Uh, thanks for the game. All right, what's under me? I'll show that bishop immediately. Okay, it's uh, let's get out of the opening with a reasonable position. A three and C four later seems reasonable. So I haven't created too many weaknesses out there. I, mean, I haven't used the F pawn. I haven't committed the F pawn. Um, my opponent seems a cautious character using his time. So probably it might be more appropriate for a, a positional battle here. Not a quick firework. Our D takes is looking like a pawn sack. And if I took with the knight, I can reinforce with f4 off knight fd7. Can't I? I'm not entirely sure how sound this is. If I played f4, would I be in trouble? To F6 or something else. I'll take F4. F6 weakens this diagonal. There's also the possibility of G4, I've noticed. Now, G4 here might be interesting. I want to be able to take on e4 without bishop e4. That's my justification now. Now, if queen h4, okay, I can take here and then queen g2. If queen g4, bishop g2. I've got to contest the D file. There is Bishop F8 to C5. What about B4 there? And Bishop C3. Yeah.
Now queen g3 might be a useful move to evict the queen. Queen e4, there's always queen g4 check. Alright, b5, c4, bishop d4 is possible. Just to rule out bishop c5 for a moment. Rook d4 has to be factored in as a forcing move all the time. Queen g3 is a kind of forcing move, trying to evict the queen back. c3 might be useful to stop c3 from my opponent. So I guess queen g3 might be something desirable here. Or even h3 uh, with the idea of if I ever take this queen h3, let's just evict this queen because I'm a pawn up. I wouldn't mind the queen going away. In fact, f5 looks as though it might be tempting. Although bishop g7 after e5 might be with f6, I don't know. This gives an h file pressure. So I could work with this h file here. b5 is a liability. Maybe b6, there's bishop c5. Rook b2 for a moment. With the idea of doubling and the option of b6. Okay. f5. I'm trying to undouble these pawns. Well, that's a self pin though. If it takes rook a1. All right, let's keep the pawn actually. I think maybe better than rook a2 is keep the pawn. Let's rook f2 for a moment. Right. I played. E6 here or something, or F6, or G5, and it's options. Let's try this. I don't want the rooks coordinating. I think that's good news. I can take the A file here, can't I? So if this pawn's a killer pawn. There's also E6 for E7 potentially. But this pawn seems like a killer pawn. In fact, I'll threaten mates immediately with rook a8. Threatening mates again with rook a8 if bishop e3. King f8, I can go for this and try and queen this. So rook a7, king e7. Well, there's bishop f6, bishop e3, rook a8, rook e, hang on. Let's calculate. King f8, bishop f6, threatens mate. I think you'd have to do something about that. I want to stop king e7. That pawn's a potential liability as well. But king f8, Bishop f6 escape squares. As a general rule, if you take some escape squares, look for a mate. It's halfway constructing a mate if you take some escape squares from the king. So king f8, bishop f6, take some escape squares from the king. e7, g7, it just needs the rook for checkmate because also an escape square has already been taken with that pawn. So bishop takes e3, so I'm threatening mate now, rook a8 again, renewing the threat of mate. The pawn and bishop. Are covering multiple escape squares. Okay, thanks.
That's Henry, and this is a very, very tough opponent. To his great credit, I'm only just tipped the balance in my favour just with this win, six five. So this is a guy that's crushed me <laughs> many times before. Okay, just energetic. I could try B three. Let's try this again. Oh, it's a three minute game, right? Okay, I didn't realize it's a three minute game, slightly faster tempo. I I don't want to lose D four in a hurry. I'm just concerned C four loses D four. Might need some support for things before I do that. Maybe D C exchange these bishops. Because I've made that protected that bishop on my last move. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. Okay. <clears throat> okay. E four now. <clears throat> this is often the classic in the Slav variations where you take and then you play E four. I think the idea is if you play E four there's always C D in, in in the Slav analogy variations, oh, should we call them? <clears throat> Uh, all right, knight c4 to b6, maybe. I think knight b6 and bishop c4 would be desirable. Actually, c3 might be good. There's also an idea of winning the exchange potentially. So c3, bishop d7, an infiltration on d7. I think it would start with c3. Yeah. Let's see tactically what's going on. The forcing moves. Bishop takes, rook takes, knight f5. Hmm. If I take all right, Queen H three here, or is that anything stronger? Queen F three runs into E four. Queen H three seems okay. Queen D two seems okay. I'll go with Queen D two actually. Knight H four threatens May F three to shield. I'm threatening knight d7 potentially, or rook d7 potentially. Okay, rook d7 seems more tempting. <clears throat> now, if I just get the queens off, just to keep things quiet with queen d5 for a moment, because I'm ahead on the clock, so I don't want to get mated with knight h4 or something dumb like that later if I weaken my king side. I think this is enough to be getting on with. D file occupying the D file. Okay, I don't want to lose the exchange. F he takes king f2. Knight h4, f3. Knight uh, h4, f takes e2. Rookie one, knight h four, rookie two, knight f three, king g two. Okay, can I round up this pawn? Right. Um, let's give that pawn for rookie seven. 
stop kink night f I mean stop night f3 let's try and coordinate the rooks with rookie seven am I getting mated on rook d3 king g4 there might be a risk so forget it I'm ahead on the clock I don't want to take a risk with getting mated Okay, thanks, Chess Energetic. <clears throat> okay, um, yeah, sometimes if if you're really ahead on the clock, you've got to factor in more and more king safety, especially in variations you can't calculate. If if you want to try and be competitive versus scientific, so if you factor in how much time's left, possibility of getting mated, the need for trying to play the best moves. Uh, every turn, there's only something computers do. They try and play the best. Generally, they try and play the best move every turn. You don't do do that if you've got a huge time advantage. You can often just play just to not be mated, not lose immediately. This mechanism is very interesting. D takes in, in the Slav lines um, or the Kali lines with white. Often D takes an E4 liberating. It's a very interesting mechanism. I think I could have done Bishop F6 and Knight D5. Okay, this might have the benefit of provoking G5. No, I think I missed the shot there. <laughs> <laughs> I should have considered Bishop F6 and Knight D5. Okay, don't matter. There might be Bishop F3 now. I have to. My pawns get doubled. Let's stop Knight B4. The use of the B4 square. Let's protect this bishop and create that battery. Threatening bishop f6 and queen h7. Now bishop f6, there's bishop e4 here. But then you know knight e4 and I'm still renewing the threat on h7. So bishop f6 is interesting, even with bishop e4. Knight e4, knight f6, queen h7. D, queen e4, I think bishop f6 is good here. Bishop f6, knight f6, queen h7. The forcing moves you've got to, if you learn anything from any of my sessions, please do calculate the forcing moves as a very high priority in your blitz. And the weakness is the last move. Okay, and I am. Thanks. And I am okay. I think I'll try. I think I'll try b3. I'll keep with my pet. Because the forcing moves are a scalable thing, they're not a checkbox thing, so it doesn't matter if you're playing a 5 minute game, a 50 minute game, or a 500 minute game. The more forcing variations you can see, the more you can break the rules on any 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 stereotypical checkbox ideas like, oh a piece looks good if you centralise it, whatever. You, if you move away from that to more dynamic chess, so uh, the calculation is more important, I think. But the general principles guide, you know, when you evaluate positions, the general principles guide. So, uh, and for me, you know, if you're, okay, I, uh, okay, is he around? Okay, are we playing? You know, if, 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 um, if you're covering any escape squares, the opponent's king, you know, see if you can get a mating combination. All right, I think I'm going to have to, a ball here. I don't know what's happened there with that challenge.
Okay, I think I'll play cautiously here with knight f3 rather than f4 against this particular setup. It's more cautious to not move the f pawn. If e4, it's a bit provocative. Knight d4, we have some sort of weird, I don't know. This is like reverse French defense of e4. I mean, for me as a chess player, I I, uh, I remember fondly winning uh, Lloyd's Under-18 uh, tournament, and my, my play was very stereotypical, actually. Uh, I think I was playing the same way if it was a 5-minute game or a 50-minute game. I basically wanted to put pieces around squares of the opponent's king. That was it. Uh, I probably did do some calculation. I looked at Fisher games and stuff, was inspired by Fisher. I remember going to one tournament... Um, the Halifax under 160. I remember when I was under 160. I think on the way I was playing uh, blindfold chess a bit to some extent with Rayner, Francis Rayner, who was a bit surprised how much I could play in my head. Uh, so he was playing in the open. Uh, I managed to win the Halifax with six out of six. I really annoyed my last round opponent. But the last round, it did remind me of this, this Fisher like knight sack on F2. Because then E3 collapsed. I got a series of checks, one loads of material. My opponent was really annoyed. I didn't realise back then. I was a bit naive about it. I didn't need to win. I could have just drawn to win the tournament. Um, I think I, my opponent didn't get any prize money. It was a bit cruel, but I was a bit naive about things then. Uh, so, um, you know, I didn't really need to do that. But yeah, I just, I was just, just playing chess basically for fun though. And um, but later, I, I, I think. Um, I, I always try to uh, theorize uh, about my games, especially the over the board games, which are, were painful, much more painful than anything online. Um, I think one of the most painful tournaments was actually an increment tournament on a large increment in uh, Gibraltar. But yeah, you go to like, if you have painful experiences, I think for me, I, I generalize more. It's more in the head, the game, to try and avoid that pain the next time. Um, but I think uh, I okay. Let, let's let's see. Let's see. Hold on a sec. Uh, probably, I think one of the problems I had personally uh, was being far too uh, stereotypical. Uh, B three's on the fire here. If I play this, there's knight D three. Um, Knight d3, maybe I can handle it. Queen c2. Um, but there's a reason I I I I did try and you know always you know generalize. There's a reason. It's you know from a programmer perspective, you try and create solutions that are, are more generic. So the thing is with chess, yeah, I think you've got to recognize there are some generic stuff to be aware of, like pawn structure, king safety, the basic elements of chess, which Steinitz emphasized. So pawn structure, king safety material, you know, weaknesses in the position, structural weaknesses. So when you evaluate any position, Steinitz gave us that checklist. But you've got to move beyond that and really think about the forcing stuff. Um, so even in Steinitz's time, he was challenged by the likes of Shigorin, playing more dynamic chess, breaking more rules, but very, very good, like sometimes uh, wonderful games between them. Uh, I think in particular, Steinitz uh, sometimes overestimated things. Uh, let's try and not, not lose material here. Bishop a1, he would be going to a self-pin. 
Bishop d2, queen d2, knight b3, queen c2, a4, knight a4, rook a4, rook b3. Basically, the conclusion there is he could win a pawn. There's a self pin. There's a tactic. I might get the pawn back. I might be okay. But what are the options here? I don't, I don't see that many. So I'll, I'll do that. <clears throat> If he wants to win a pawn, it does come at the cost of a self pin, which has been one of the things this year in my thinking that these pins are very, very interesting, both tactically and and the longer period of the of game. Um, rookie one, he can still win a pawn if he wants. But this self pin is such a cost, surely. It, it comes at a cost to do this. If he's going to play bishop d2, queen d2, knight b3, queen c2, a4, knight a4, rook a4, rook b3, queen moves. I've got pressure on the b file there. If we evaluate that final position, I can build up on b7. He's lost what is quite a nice knight on c5, basically. Are we heading that direction? Maybe Queen D one was better. Okay, so the evaluation here I had was that B seven. Okay, A three is on the fire. F two is on the fire. There's a pin here. C D and Knight D five. All right, let's have a look. Bishop B two, C D, E D, Knight D five. I can play bishop c3, there's rook c4, there's also c4's dropping off. Something's dropping off here, I'm losing material. I can play rook b7, rook c4, queen e2, rook c2. is. It's not ideal. I think I am losing material. Yeah, I'm losing material by force here. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at rook b7, rook c4, queen e2, rook c2, queen e3. Let's have, let's go with that. I think. Now, bishop b2, rook c2, dc. Or rook b3, rook b3, rook c2, queen e3. I think I'm trying to minimize material loss with rook b3 here. I'm still losing material. Queen d5, it's not, I'm falling to bits. He's only got eight seconds, but I'm definitely falling to bits here. Rook c2, rook d2 at least. Because if queen f3, I think it's almost got knight e3. Alright, I'm glad for some... He's only got like no time. That's the thing. That's that's the problem. He's got no time. Alright, well, well played. Uh, yeah, I... <laughs> yeah, I... Okay, anyway. Um, Alright, Cobra. <clears throat> So I will venture f4 here. It seems more as though I can get away with f4 here. Now I, I do have a liking for this position recently. But yes, now I have a definite liking for this position because the bishop seems to be, to me, a lot of fun in this position. I've had fun recently with knight g5 to h7 in many, many games recently with this experimentation knight e4 there's queen takes g7 checkmate <clears throat> so knight g5 
h6 knight h7 hits f8 and, and f6 so again if knight takes then there's queen g7 checkmate if rook e8 hmm. okay so here queen h3 I'm gaining a tempo and putting my queen against h7 I think he's playing with fire a little bit knight f6 he's playing with fire knight g5 h6 I can also consider g4 for g5 g4 g5 might be good because later I can maybe play king h1 rook g4 to h4 back up the queen on h7 drive away defensive knight now knight g5 here threatens queen takes and bishop h7 which is one of the neater tactics I've played recently multiple times queen h5 bishop h7 is checkmate now here g4 knight g7 queen h6 this knight's pinned to g7 I think I'll go for that so there's no knight g4 I believe hmm. Mm, oh, that's interesting. <clears throat> One question though F takes Bishop G4, Queen G2. The Bishop and Knight are fault. I have a loose piece on G5, I guess that's the basis for something. The loose piece on g5. However, if he moves the knight to hit the loose piece on g5, the bishop's loose on g4. So let's think. Knight e8. There's simply queen takes g4. One thing for me I found with experimenting with weird openings, first it was E3 fetish and then it was a B3 fetish. Uh, the thing I found is basically you can be an assassin more easily. People don't seem to know anything of what they're doing a lot of the time when they're outside of their opening theory, uh, basically. E takes, C takes, I'm just winning a piece with Queen G4. Okay, big deal, not DC. There's knight C3. <clears throat> Alright, Bishop uh, Bishop H2, sure. It's it's an issue. What about rook f2? Well, there is knight f6. Oh, rook f6, bishop h2. So what? King h1. Yes, yeah, so I've been experimenting recently. I, I think there's something Sadler said. If you learn a diversity of openings, you, you know about different pawn structures and ideas, which maybe you wouldn't get by having a very narrow opening repertoire. So if you're not a professional player having to win, you know, for money, you can actually just invest in your own learning by playing some weird and wacky opening systems or like B3, E3, C3. See what happens. I think sometimes you'll be surprised people don't improvise correctly. Knight takes D5. Bishop takes B2. Knight takes C1's not a problem there. I'm just thinking tactically, um, knight e7, queen e7, f takes, I think knight e7, king h8, there's almost an amazing thing with knight f7. So let's have a look at this again, knight d5, queen moves, knight check, it's almost there. 
any bishop e5 he's got c1 if if he had queen c8 knight e7 that's four king king queen that's a fork there queen c5 let's imagine queen c5 then knight e7 king h8 bishop e7 c1 queen doesn't match about losing the exchange there I don't think it matters so the only point if he wants c1 here Let's see. Queen d6, knight e7, king moves, bishop e5, queen e5 is on the rook, rook c1, queen b2, rook f1. Oh, there's knight e7 check, just winning the queen. Oh, there's bishop b2, rook f1. If I play rook c1, I'll be happy just to stop this pawn. There is this tactic with knight e7, knight f7, potentially, or queen c8, knight f7 mating. Maybe queen c8 here. Knight F seven there, not yet. <sighs> okay, I don't want to lose on time. I have to give back some material, unfortunately. Give back a rook? More than a rook? I'm threatening Queen C eight, potentially. Queen c8 here is good. Takes knight f7 mate, knight f6 rook, queen f8. So I'm halfway correct and mating that because I'm covering the escape square. F g7 here. Two escape squares taken. Look for mating combinations. Thanks, Cobra. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, Tom. I do like tactics. Um, I think started uh, tactical increased tactical awareness started not from any tactics training, by the way. It was more of a a, a kind of um, if you're a programmer, a kind of loop. Basically, look look at the significance of all the seemingly insignificant stuff like Sherlock Holmes until everything has become significant so you look for the absolutely weird and wonderful until you're satisfied that you've checked that those possibilities are not significant so I remember clearly born at Congress there was a game against Bagri I had this really nice tactical combination as a result uh, so my tactics elevated at, from that point. But yeah, people do tactical training, but I don't think they uh, conceptualize much about things. But I, I always do. Okay, so yeah, I think for me, it's there's a kind of loop going on. It's you address what seems to be insignificant. So it's like a Sherlock Holmes, you know, like Sherlock Holmes, he rules out what's logical to look at what's illogical after uh, but because he had such major like nemesis you know he had to do that because they, they were extremely resourceful so I think it was that sort of logic uh, to find tactics sometimes you have to look at what seems to be totally insignificant 
let's abort this game the mechanic but the thing is um, further than that though there was a sniff of a bad smell in a way because I'd taken some escape square so it's even further justified sometimes <laughs> the, the term bad smell by the way they're using it in programming for like things like duplicate code maybe you can use it in chess I don't know why they've made it more visceral this idea that there's bad smells associated with things in programming but apparently it's 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 a dumb thing to talk about things like duplicate code as bad smells but in chess yeah if you've got escape squares covered it's that also adds to the motivation that the insignificant is potentially significant because you've already woven a percentage of amazing that right so looking at insignificant stuff you're just tipping it over the edge of what already is a near mating net if you see what I mean yeah okay if I played Queen G7 here, Rook G8, Queen F7, I'm on E6 then. I'm undermining the entire pawn structure. If my Queen's not getting trapped, this could be worth it. On Knight E4, Queen H8, taking, there might be F6 to trap the Bishop, but you know, even then, two Rooks for the Queen is a good deal. I think with D3, uh, later so I'm tempted overall even though this seems counterintuitive but another consideration here by the way I've got the light square bishop without the counterpart I'm stronger on g2 than perhaps my opponent wants so if this g file counterplay intuitively uh, looks good but technically I, I have got a solid light square bishop here so I might not be getting mated on g2 that quickly Famous last words. Okay, but we'll we'll see. I'm undermining a pawn chain here at root of the pawn chain. So e6 is under fire, f6 is under fire. Rook f8, queen takes e6. Is my queen getting trapped? The thing is, by taking out the g7 pawn, I've weakened the diagonal, which is great for this bishop. In particular, you then look out for like f6. So f6 is under fire at the moment. And that could be good. Okay. If I play f takes here, bishop takes e5. He's on h2. If I take that, if he takes, I take the queens off. If he takes with the queen, yeah, I guess you could take with the queen. So knight c3 here. Let's connect the rooks. My queen gets trapped after rook f8, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, my queen's getting trapped. Oh, queen g7 to h6. Hang on. It might have a route to go. Otherwise, this whole thing loses. Rook f8, queen g7, rook g8, queen h6. So have I been greedy or not? Too greedy or not? Will I suffer indigestion from eating too many pawns? Rook f8 to trap my queen. Very nice.
Okay, I'm panicking now. Okay, let's see. Okay, don't panic. Mm, but I need to move. Everything seems to lose. I think rook f6, rook f7 is at least something. It's two pieces for the queen. It's the best I could find. So maybe I am suffering. Rook f6, queen h7. Now this is without a counterpart though, so that's stronger than usual. E D Queen D four. Will I be losing another piece? Uh after Queen D two. <clears throat> okay, maybe knight a four knight d one is good. No, this looks horrible. At least I'm protecting the bush. I thought I was losing another piece. A major thing. Maybe there's 94 there. Queen d2, knight e4, queen c2, rook f1. Alright, there's bishop f3 here. Huh? So I'm hitting the queen, protecting the knight. Let's coordinate, get some coordination. Let's unpin. Ninety five. Rookie two. Queen f four. Knight e5. Alright, I can coordinate. We'll just kick the queen out first. Let's kick the queen out first. Maybe knight g3. Protect h2. There is knight f1 on queen h4. Knight e3 to c4. Right, there's rookie 7 potentially. Rookie 4. We'll just. Rookie 7 there. Rookie 4. 
I don't think they're... I think I'm out of the woods after that. Okay, dramatic. Yeah, no, I think... Um, let's have a quick look at that. <laughs> I think what I did was the only thing to do uh, to get two pieces for the Queen but let's check that out maybe there's something I'm missing here so my Queen's been trapped how cheeky minus 2.91 <laughs> oh, the, the engines don't lie do they I have to play knight a3 here apparently for some reason this makes all the difference knight a3 why because of knight c4 So it's minus one. So I played the horrific blunder knight c3. See, that's the checklist principle gone wrong. It seems more sensual and sensible, but in fact, because of forcing moves, the paradox is that knight c4 is a vital forcing move to hit the queen in response. So the forcing moves override any checkbox intuition. So knight c3, my queen's just getting trapped now with rook f8 as the major threat. I couldn't find anything here. So I played this. Oh, that's a mistake. It does give me two pieces of the queen. So rook here. I think with rook g7, is that the idea? Rook gg7 to safely. This is one idea, but there's also rook g2 as well mating. But if you want to win the queen, let's have a look at this. Rook g2 is stronger. Right, and then take the queen. So this is now what happened in the game apparently apparently this is a slight mistake because I get two pieces for the Queen and I didn't think intuitively it was totally lost until this position where I thought hold on a sec I'm gonna lose another piece here maybe that's not even necessary rook f2 I thought this was losing almost another piece. Oh, there's a tactical shot, rook d1 against d7. That's why I played rook f2, you see. I thought I was losing another piece there. So apparently this is bad, this rook f2. Oh, Queen d4 hits both pieces, a1 and e4. So they'll be winning that. That's why. That shows that actually, again, the counterintuitive move, king h1, is better here because of basically another forcing sequence of rook d1 is much better to try and defend this position. So actually, the way I played it was losing a piece to queen d4 here. So queen d4 is winning move. This gives me my idea that I'm, I've got two pieces for the Queen. It's not entirely, totally unplayable in this Blitz context. But yeah, it's not as clear. There's a lot of tactics in this game. Uh, but yeah, the upshot is um, it seems the Queen's getting trapped <laughs> the way I played it. Okay. All right, I hope you enjoyed this week. Uh, okay, one fun, ten boring, uh, and have a good rest of Sunday, 
and two next week. Okay, if you want to quickly vote, one fun ten boring. If you enjoyed it, one fun. Okay, and uh, see you next week. Okay, thanks very much.